typically hold a lot of water around my lower abdominals that got flushed out pretty quick. Dropped a lot of body weight, just in water weight for sure. My fast is three minutes to go until, until it's over. I, I'm not hungry. I've got some food here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you guys can watch me break my fast, but I don't need to eat it. My consciousness, my spirit, my one, it's not dependent upon food. Let's tuck in here. First piece of food in the last 72 hours. Yo, what's good my friends? It's Adam here. And welcome to this 72 hour water fast review. It's my first ever time doing a prolonged fast. I've been doing intermittent fasting for the last eight years, but because of a podcast that I did for the Eternal Energy podcast with Glenn Money last Saturday, he pretty, he's really big into the water fasting. He challenged me on the spot. A three day water fast? It's happening. It's on. <laughs> it's on. It's done. It's 100% yep. done. Yeah. I could not agree. I actually said I would start Sunday night, but I ended up just deciding to start Saturday night. So 7.30 p.m. Tuesday, I'm, a, I'm 13 minutes away from completing my first ever 72 hour water fast. What I want to do today is just break down the pros, the cons, some mistakes I made, the overall feelings about it, what I'm going to do moving forward with it. So let's begin things here with the cons. There's really only three and there's so many positives. I just want to get this out of the way. Number one, obviously I couldn't train to my full potential. I felt relatively weak. Uh, the only type of workouts I felt safe doing over the past three days was some light core workouts in the morning and some low intensity steady state walking and also some low intensity saunering. But I felt a little bit fragile and a little bit weak on it for sure. In terms of just physical strength, I didn't want to do anything. I just didn't trust lifting heavy weights or anything like that. Second con was that obviously you can't taste delicious food, obviously. However, I'm a big foodie. I love to cook. I love to experiment. And also psychologically, I have a very good relationship with my food in terms of utility. I use food to rebuild myself. So there was a little bit of a psychological battle there on the first night, but I got over that pretty quick. But the major con is the severe drop in testosterone. I noticed this immediately. I have extremely powerful erections being on a meat-based diet, carnivore-based diet for the last six months. And so it's like to the point where my erections could be so strong that they wake me up in the middle of the night and it's annoying. I noticed from the first night, I didn't wake up with morning wood, no flag, no flag, no full mast on second day or third morning. So my testosterone I can feel has taken a huge dive. So prolonged use of this is probably not good for making it children. And that's it for the cons. So moving on to the pros, where do we even begin here? There's so many. I'm not gonna dive into all the science and the physiological benefits that you could hear someone like Thomas DeLauer speak on. Uh, link his video down below, because that's the video that I was following in terms of my guidance. And he, st he spends the first five, 10 minutes of that video just painting out the major physiological benefits of doing a prolonged fast. I'll just reel three off the top of my head for you that are the three biggest ones. Uh, the stem cell upregulation in terms of your body it, when you're in a prolonged fast is able to upregulate its ability to create stem cells to repair injuries and repair uh, broken down tissue. So there's that. Uh, part two, the DNA damage prevention in terms of the uh, strengthening of the telomeres, which are like the shoelace caps on the end of your uh, DNA cells. So it prevents your aging and for the longevity. And then also third one, the autophagy, the increase in autophagy, which is just your body's ability to recycle uh, dead cells and create new cells. That all gets upregulated when you enter a prolonged fast. So there's those, but you wanna find out more about the sciencey shit, just go to Tom's video, okay? That's all I'm gonna say on it. But in terms of what I physiologically noticed with myself, uh, definitely a drop in body fat percentage and a huge drop in water retention. My face got a lot more sucked up, uh, a lot of, I, I, I typically hold a lot of water around my lower abdominals that got flushed out pretty quick. Dropped a lot of body weight, just in water weight for sure. But I guess more so the lack of hunger, clear mind and lack of hunger. You know, I was able to do all my normal work. I was able to do two hour live podcasts on social q and I'm currently deep. I'm 40 hours deep into my first ever water fast. Mentally feeling very good, not hungry. Mentally feeling very sharp. Got a lot more work done than usual, not having to think about food. That's a huge positive. But the lack of hunger. I thought I would get hunger pangs, but I didn't. And I've been doing intermittent fasting for a long, long time. I'm very fat adapted. I've, by being on a carnivore meat-based diet, you're very adapted to using your own fat as fuel source because you're fasting a lot anyway. And you're not, your body's not searching for carbohydrates and glucose as a fuel source. So... It was just interesting though that even right now, 
my fast is three minutes to go until until it's over. I, I'm not hungry. I've got some food here. I'm gonna I'm gonna you guys can watch me break my fast, but I don't need to eat it. I don't feel I feel like and that's actually the next major. Is it the next major one? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And yeah, it leads me to the number one pro, which is an intense realization I had out on the footy oval today, just walking under the sun. It was something of a spiritual cataclysm, a Satori-like moment in which that I just realized I could do this forever. That I really just don't feel like eating food ever again. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I've just got such a clean, low hum of energy. Everything within me just feels so clean, having not had any food for the last three days. And I know, I know I would waste away into nothingness if I ate nothing for the rest of my life. I know it'd be the, the end of me. But I feel like I'm just at that point right now where I am nothing. I feel so clean. When I say I, I don't even know who I is. I'm just using that to relate to you guys. But I am you guys. So, so I check in here. Just before this uh, three-day water fast ends, you know, first the thought process was, well, what if we just extend it to seven days? So I'm like, the way I feel right now is that I could extend it for life. I'm so tempted, it just feels so right. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it feels so right. God, oh boy. We'll see. And it was just this incredible, joyous moment in which I realized that my existence is not dependent upon food. Now, I don't mean that in a physiological way. Of course, this mechanical vehicle requires the building blocks of protein and amino acids to rebuild it and to keep it functioning. I know that. I get that, right? But what I'm talking about is my consciousness, my consciousness, my spirit, my one. It's not dependent upon food. When this mechanical vehicle is done with and done away with, there's something inside of me that I've been brought closer to as a result of this challenge. Just This would be a beautiful way to transition to the whatever's next for my spirit, for my consciousness, is to just, just fast for the rest of life and just see how long I last and, or how long the body lasts. And all these ideas would come into me and I was smiling, I was laughing, and because I know how ridiculous it sounds, I know how silly it sounds, but then I would counteract by saying, but why is it so silly? We all have to go at some point. Why would this way be any good? silly? You know, it's, but it is silly. It is hard for people to understand choosing a conscious way of dying. So anyways, I get that, but I, I genuinely am at the place right now, a couple minutes before 72 hours thinking that the way I feel right now, how good I feel right now, how clean inside I feel, that was the feeling on the over. I just feel so clean. Is that I just never eat, need to eat food again. And my relationship with food now is forever better. It's amazing. Okay, so wrapping up this video, I said that I would give it a cheeky rate in terms of the challenge scale. Zero being uh, absolute cake, 10 being the agoge from the Spartans. You know, just the hardest shit you could do to the easiest shit you could do. I rate this about a three. Now that is based on my own personal experience. I can imagine based on 26 year old Adam right now, if I was 18 year old Adam, this would probably be a straight 10. You know, I used to have a really bad relationship with food and which that overeating was a constant thing for me, especially at night. And I was such a glutton. But now that through the, especially the past six months on carnivore meat based, my relationship with food just got better and better and better. I really just use it as a utility. So the challenge itself, physiologically to not eat was almost non-existent. The only two challenging moments of this challenge was number one, on Sunday night, the people in my place decided to cook a roast lamb. And if you know me, roast lamb is my favorite food of all time. If I'm on death row, that's the meal I want. I want a, I want a, I want a slow cook. I want a six, eight hour slow cooked lamb shoulder that just give it to me. I'll have the bone and everything. And they decided to cook it. So I had to go into a different room and just meditate to make sure that it wasn't going to get to me. Uh, that was challenge point number one. Challenge point number two was as a result of a mistake I made, which was this morning on day three, I completely fucked up uh, the previous day in my electrolytes, in my water. You need to be adding a half a teaspoon of salt throughout the day, just spread it throughout the day, throughout your water to maintain your mental clarity and maintain your muscular connection so you're 
muscles have the ability to contract. They require sodium for that. So when I woke up, I didn't, I didn't add any salt to my water on the second day. Day three morning, which is this morning, I woke up, I was so lightheaded and I was so weak. I was as weak as a newborn puppy. I could barely do half of the core workout I normally do. Couldn't even do 50% of it. So how do I rectify this? I got a small glass of water, about that big. I got a half a teaspoon, no, a quarter teaspoon of salt, Himalayan rock salt, dumped it in, swirled it up. It's almost unbearable because like, it's so concentrated. I slammed it and I felt good within like a minute. I felt back to normal in a minute. It was just, I was mineral depleted and dehydrated at the same time. So I rectified those two things. That was probably the most challenging moment, but it was a self-inflicted challenge. It wasn't as a result of the challenge itself. You know what I'm saying? So would I recommend you guys do this? 100%. You know, I could spend all night here talking about the benefits of mental resilience, of self-confidence, and realizing that, hey, actually, I stuck to my word. I didn't eat a single piece of food for three days. It's amazing. What else could I do in life that I could achieve? Oh, I realized that I can overcome myself and I can overcome the challenges of thinking that I need this or need that. What else could I do in this life? It's a real self-confidence booster to know that, well, we've just gone over 7.30 now, so I've gone over 72 hours, that if I was ever put in a starvation, forced starvation, I'd be okay. You know, just knowing that makes me mentally tougher than most other people on the street that haven't done this. You know, you might be able to go out on the street and ask 100 people, hey, do you think you could do a 72 hour fast? You know, maybe a lot of people, maybe 50% would say, no, I definitely couldn't. But there might be a certain selection of people that would be very deluded and think, yeah, I could, I could. But they never really know. They're just armchair theorizers until they actually get out and do the damn thing. I done the damn thing. And as one of my favorite quotes goes, do it and you'll understand. Never do it and you'll never understand. It's all inspirational. Do it and you'll understand. Never do it and you'll never understand. I guess that's a quote from um, Sukuga Fuetteru. Sukuga Fuetteru, Run with the Wind. So, yes, I highly encourage you guys to try this. Uh, anywhere from 24 hours to 72 hours has been shown in the science to be in the Goldilocks area, the Goldie Zone, in which that you're going to get the most benefits without the deterioration. Uh, you know, you're not going to lose any muscle up to the 72 hour mark. So that's one thing I was worried about that Glenn and I talked about. Also in Tom DeLauer's video, he covers all these concerns. So just make sure from my experience, things you want to learn, make sure half a teaspoon of salt in your water every day. How much water was I drinking every day? Roughly 2.4 to 2.8 liters. And it was just based on response. I wasn't like setting a target. It was just response to thirst. Now I would love your guys' feedback. I would love to know if you embark on this challenge and how you go of it. Drop a comment down below. I'd love to know uh, what you've been doing, experimenting or fasting in general, your own biohacking. Please hit a thumbs up on the video as well if you did enjoy the content. Just help support the channel and support this video. And for sure, send this to one of your mates that you know would get down on this. Send this to a homeboy or homegirl that would love to get around this. And uh, yeah, let's, get, let's, let's build a little community going on here. Definitely check out uh, Glenn and check out our podcast that would probably be out by now. Uh, I'll put a link down below where you can watch our full podcast together on the Eternal Energy Podcast. So my friends, that covers my first ever 72 hour water fast. Oh, also what I said, I was, what am I gonna be doing in the future? What I wanna do in the future is once a month. That seems to be the recommended, which is just once a month, do a 72 hour fast, you're gonna get a lot of benefits from it, uh, metabolically speaking. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, even though in my mind, it's like I wanna fast for the rest of my life. That's how I feel right now. But yeah, I will, uh, I'll, I'll do it once a month. Is it gonna be the first three days of the month? If I can, that just makes it easy. Otherwise, we'll just work it when we can. So, we are officially 72 hours and six or seven minutes in. So, it's time to break this fast. So, I'll show you guys, so let's do it. Knife, and that's a bloody knife right there. <laughs> that's a knife right there. <laughs> Okay, what have we got here? <laughs> As per Tom DeLau's video's instructions, we've got lean meat. Now you can't get leaner than this meat. This is Australian kangaroo. Listen, kangaroo in general is like 99% protein. This particular cut of kangaroo, the fillet, 
is like 100% protein. This is straight muscle. There's like not an ounce of fat on this. And the reason for this is because you don't want to overwhelm the digestive system which is what Tom was saying. Your digestive system is very uh, sensitive right now and not having eaten in three days. Just cutting into this and just looks so beautiful. So this is a very, this, is a, this wouldn't even be 100 grams of meat. It's a very, very small amount of meat, just being salted, just being peppered, no marinade. And I'll see if I can show you guys that right there. Just look at how beautiful that is. Just dripping in its own juices, beautiful pink. So let's tuck in here. First piece of food in the last 72 hours. Hold on. Subetemo. Inochi ni. Kanshishita. Itsumo to ein ni. Itadakimasu. Yeah. So good, good. <laughs> Spin it up. It's so damn good. <sighs> I can just feel my eyes are watering. I can just feel the rush, the rush of blood the rush of this sacred animal just entering my system and honoring me with all of his nutrients. It's iron, it's zinc, it's B vitamins. I can, I can feel it in my balls. I can feel it in my balls. Of course, this is the highest quality meat you could possibly ever get. It's wild, organic, from the bushlands of Australia. Supreme athlete in the kangaroo, 100% protein pretty much. Just still the interesting thing though, eating this, this food right now is that I don't need it. And that's the shift that I felt spiritually today. I don't need it for my consciousness to exist. Yes, I need it to build muscle. Yes, I need it to build my blade and to sharpen my blade. And to operate as best as I can in this life. But I know that I'm much more than this body and this vehicle. And there's something much more eternal about it. Oh. Hontoni Kanshester. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm gonna have a quiet moment to myself here and uh, film some cheeky b-roll of me eating this food for you guys. I wish you all the best in your lives. Much peace and much joy. Ja. <laughs>